Yes, now family ammo. Welcome back to another video with Jazz TV. Today we're going to go to Jazz's top boxing movies. I go from Rocky One all the way to Creed Two. Good night, but yeah, we're going to go through my favourite boxing movies. You might have seen some of these. Some of these are old. Some of them are good. Um, some of them seem to be key production, but nonetheless, fantastic. And these are my top tens. Sweating my eyes off here, by the way. But um, <laughs> I think by the time this video ends, I'm gonna be sweating right through. <laughs> you can see my nipples. So, anyway, my number one, well, first one on the list will be Gladiator. I don't know if anyone's seen this. It's Cuba Gooden Jr. It's about a white fella. He moves to a predominantly black area and he meets a friend in a boxing gym like people do, often do. Boxing brings people together, doesn't it? And this fella um, ends up fighting, he gets involved in the mob, gets mixed up with the mob a little bit. Um, meets another friend, a Hispanic guy. He ends up in a bit of a bad way because of boxing, goes bit uh, underground, unlicensed, bare knuckle. And yeah, I won't spoil the end. <laughs> I'm dying to, but yeah, he meets a girl, and yeah, it's a good little, good little boxing story. Well, yeah, that's my first one Cuba Good Junior Gladiator. This one is my, my, so good, so so good. Rocky 2. Now, B2, Rocky 1, Rocky's just got a shot as an Italian stallion. He got a shot out of nowhere for, for just on the back of his name, really. Apollo's coach didn't want him to be himself, so he said he's all wrong for us, but yeah, he proves himself in the first one, but the second one is a proper story of um, self belief. He, he has to overcome his own confidence and self belief. and. Um, he has to rematch with the champ and uh, he burst onto the scene really. I don't want to say it, I don't want to ruin it because if <laughs> you haven't seen it already, where the fuck have you been? It's been around longer than me, but yeah, Rocky 2, that's probably. There's something to like about all the Rockies, isn't he? But Rocky 3 gets a bit flash and uh, I didn't like that about Rocky, he weren't that guy at art, was he? But <laughs> maybe he was, I don't know. But yeah, Rocky 2 is that way, where did you got that hunger about him? He's so unsure and he's, uh, he, he's doing it for, for he's, he's su it's survival for him so yeah Rocky 2 is uh, probably one of my best Rockies. This is an amazing, uh, even the, the acting, the, the movie is amazing but the acting, the acting is brilliant to me and the uh, choice here is the raging bull Jake LaMotta, Jake LaMotta story and um, a brilliant, brilliant story, and fighters will relate to a lot of the things when he meets the girl young and he's uh, there's no, no sex before the fight and stuff like that. So, fighters still do that today. Uh, looks like I'm gonna do now as I'm here in Dubai for six weeks, so yeah, that's it. Uh, good at insight to what fighters go through, and uh, he's got that little bit of dem he's demented with his thoughts through boxing and he's, uh, his personal life. And um, fighters go through that, you know, just as normal society, and then also boxing is two bits worlds apart. And it's different making that transition. Some fighters live, <laughs> live in both at the same time, I don't know how they do it. But maybe now fighters never get to the top, but yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant little uh, bit of action as well by Robert De Niro. He puts the weight on, not the CGI, he actually really puts the weight on. He looks a bit down, he's depressed, and when you see every fighter like that, that bit where real fighters they look in the mirror and they go ah oh, come on let's get it together and they've got to fight themselves they've got a real fight a personal fight coming up because they put a bit of weight on or they're going through confidence issues and stuff like that a bit of an identity crisis if they come off the back of a loss he's looking in the mirror he's got this weight on, on him at, at some point in, in, in the movie and it's a uh, very very relatable for fighters so yeah it's called the raging bull robert t nero fantastic film gave him lots of story is it done? No, it's not done. Don't overcook it. Overcook it's no good. It defeats its own purpose. What are you doing? Yeah. I just sit down overcooking. You're overcooking it. Bring it over. You want your steak? Bring it over. Bring it over. It's like a piece of charcoal. Bring it over here. You want your steak? Yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah, Steak. Can't wait for this to be done. No, yeah. I can't wait. Good. 
Thank you. Happy? Happy? That's all I want. That's, That's all I there. want. No more. There. You bought me about a steak, huh? That's great. You bought me about a steak? Cinderella man, Jim Braddock story. Um, brilliant fellow man, it's just so true because boxing's a full time job, family's a full time job, and then going to work to provide your family's a full time job, and that's, that's the case for a lot of fighters. People don't see that, people just see them when they, when they turn up on the telly. But every fighter, uh, most fighters end up having a, having a family. But unfortunately, if you don't, end up having a family really, but everyone's got commitments to some degree. And boxing is that um, the ultimate sacrifice in every level. The Jim Braddock story is um, very inspirational to me and most fighters and most people who watch it. Just a brilliant story. It's called Cinderella Man. Cinderella Man. Yeah, watch it. I am sweating my head off here. Hard times. It's called. It's Char Charlie Charles Bronson, the original, not the, <laughs> not the lunatic in the prison who we know of now. Charles Bronson, hard times. Black and white is a black and white movie. I don't think it is. It's about, I think it might be about the seventies. Could be wrong there once again, but um, it's an old, old film, and um, he's on the road. Boxing brings him back into um, society, and he fight, fights his way through the system. And uh, yeah, it's a brilliant time. Brilliant, brilliant time. Yeah, it was it? It's a brilliant time watching it. But it's a brilliant film. It goes hard times. Bleed for this. Vinny Pazienza story. Fantastic. He has a he has a clash. Uh, why, it's, why it's a good one for me is because he has the clash when he does his neck in. Obviously nowhere near as, as severe as uh, this for me, but when I got a broken jaw, he's, he's staying on his own, he's staying almost in secret. And um, wow, I'm sweating my head off. And that was the same thing for me, I was training in secret. Um, I was spinning because I couldn't take home impacts on my me, on me jaw, on my chin for a while. Um, during sessions in, <laughs> in the dark. Like, Hide from the people who, who advised me not to say and I, I told me coach the jaw was okay and just sparring with world champion Zan Zanazaki you know the <laughs> AB jaw went again and didn't, didn't tell no one about that but yeah Vinny Pazienza believe in this fantastic movie I'm not going to ruin the ending but it's definitely worth a watch Jimmy! in Kent County Memorial Hospital tonight with a fractured neck if you let me do the fusion I can guarantee you'll be able to walk again I need to be able to fight again me. And not fusing my neck. Oh. Ah. I'm pretty sick of people talking about me like I'm dead. Kev, I'm gonna fight again. No, you ain't, Vinny. No! I mean, you just don't know how to give up. No, I know exactly how to give up. You know what scares me, Kev? Is that it's easy. Come on, this is insane! Now, going back to the Rockies. Rocky 4. Uh, he's being flashed in, in Rocky 3. He, um, he lost the title, he regained the title, but he's lost Nick, his coach. So he's got to refine himself again. And um, now he's um, his, now his mentor and coach, Apollo, gets beat off Drago, gets killed off Drago. He's lost two, there's two of his coaches are dead now, and he's um, and he, he makes the choice to go to, to Russia on Christmas Day, run up the mountains. Found that younger, he's got the younger back, but he's also scared. He doesn't, he, he doesn't want to do it, he doesn't know if he can do it. And he, uh, yeah, yeah, I won't ruin the ending like I want to on all these films, but yeah, Rocky IV, the soundtrack's amazing. Yeah, Rocky IV, the, my, my favourite soundtrack is probably Rocky V, but yeah, Rocky IV, brilliant. Million Dollar Baby, brilliant, brilliant uh, film. Some great parts in the film. Even in the gym, you got uh, the fella called Danger. How'd you get all the ass and hair through this little tiny hole? He's half not there. He, he, he let him in the gym because he feel a bit sorry for him. And every gym has got someone like that. <laughs> if, if you're in the gym and you don't know who that guy is, it's probably you. But yeah, it's a brilliant film. And um, she comes from nothing, takes herself away. That's why it relates to me. I've took myself away from my family at times and gone, gone to different places. and. Um, I brought myself into situations that a lot of people wouldn't have ever had the balls to put themselves into and um, it's a bit of a sad end to the one woman but then you see when she does get her finances up she starts doing well and then people who, who were never there to help her they all, they all come crawling around and stuff like that so it's, uh, it's a fantastic movie, Million Dollar Baby and it's inspiring because it's a woman doing it 
when uh, women's boxing and we're playing at a point where you could do that. So yeah, I think the likes of the Katie Taylors of the world, Tasha Jones of the world, Trailblazer and Jane Couch, let's not forget Jane Couch. But you can, uh, I can imagine that these women all went through something different. Uh, it's a little bit different now, women, women have got them avenues. Now it's not even women, now is it? Transsexuals having them avenues, but something I don't agree with. But that's a bit of a tangent for another time. But yeah, millions dollar baby, fantastic. Now this one for me, this is my favourite. Because it's just so, so, it's so real. And it's real to me, it's real to any other fighter who's actually experienced boxing. It's called the Hard to Default, a black and white movie. I think it might have been 19, late 50s, 60s. Could be, could be well off there, but it's about some fights that they bring him over from, from He's Eastern European, but he's massive, so they think they can do something with him, the mob get up, get a grip of him. And the uh, pump his confidence, they, he doesn't even know the pump in his confidence, and uh, <laughs> whatever he's hitting is falling over because they're getting paid off the mob, and he doesn't understand what's going on, and he's actually growing in confidence. And uh, he's got a manager, and every now and again, in boxing in real life, you get a, you get a good guy, a good person. He's not in it for the money. He's not in it. He's not there to be uh, robbing people or ripping people off, he's just got a good heart. This fella's name in the film is um, Eddie. I think his name is Eddie. And he proves himself to be a good character at the end. When, when the fight is all washed up. And um, I'm not going to ruin it once again, but yeah. Eddie proves himself to be a good guy when everyone else, all the mobs take from this guy. They use him, abuse him, they let him go. And Eddie becomes the star of the show by his actions in the end. So that was my nine. I could have, well, let's just throw Creed in there. Creed could be the next one. Tony Bell using Creed. He's the scouser. And um, yes, yeah, so there's Creed. There's ten. Ten of my um, ten of my top picks on the movies. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. What was your favourite movies? Did I miss any out there? What was your favourite Rocky? Um, yeah, leave it in the comment section below but thanks for watching please like subscribe and leave a comment as always have a great day